What is going on everybody? My name is Earl here. What I have here is a 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now today's video, we're gonna go ahead and mess around with it. And we're gonna go ahead and put this TP3 from Arctic thermal pad. Now, what does this thermal pad do? Essentially what this does, according to the internet, is it cools off or it makes the VRM, which is the one in charge of regulating the voltage for the CPU, uh, run a lot cooler and therefore it can sustain higher frequency over time, it can sustain higher clock speed, and whatever, whatnot. It still is going to run hot, no matter what. It is an Intel machine, and it is on a very thin design chassis, aka the MacBook design as usual anyway. But we can help it sustain higher frequency, therefore better performance over time. I'm not sure how big of a difference it is, but a lot of people are saying they noticed it significantly, they didn't notice it that much. It might be five to 10 degrees colder, whatever. So I'm really hoping that is indeed the case. This MacBook is barely used. I've used it for a couple of months, but I know the inside is very much a very clean machine. So it isn't really running that hot like a lot of people are saying on their 2019 MacBook Pros. What I have here is the Radeon 5600M, which is the highest spec graphics on this computer. Uh, it has HBM 2 8 gigabytes of memory. And then for the CPU, I have the i9 Coffee Lake 9980HK, which is the highest CPU you can get for this model, as well as eight cores and 16 threads. This is a 45 watt CPU, and I believe the GPU is also around between 45 and 50 watts, therefore combining around 100 watts of power on this very, very thin designed MacBook Pro. Our baselines for the temps are right here. For the CPU, we are hovering around 50, 60 degrees idling. There is nothing running in this computer apart from a couple of things like drivers and whatnot on my Razer keyboard and mouse. For GPU, it is hovering around 50 to 55, 60 degrees. So let's just keep that in mind right there as well as for the CPU. When I do open things, so let's say we're going to go ahead and open Google Chrome right here. As you can see, it spikes up to around 60, 70, 80 degrees, but it goes down pretty quick to 60 degrees. Now I am running a second monitor on this computer. So as you can see right there, which is at 3440 by 1440. And a lot of times I believe because it has inequality uh, when it comes to frame rate, as well as the resolution, it tends to run the MacBook a little bit harder. But so far I haven't really noticed that. This MacBook is relatively quiet for the most part. And that is mostly because there's not a lot of dust on this computer. It's a very clean machine and I take care of it. Now regarding the TP3 thermal pad right here, I found that this is the most effective brand as well as model of thermal pads. Um, link will be down in the description for this thermal pad if you guys want to check this out and put it on your 2019 MacBook Pro. There's really no way of doing this scientifically. I'm not that professional when it comes to benchmarks and whatnot. Clearly not on this YouTube channel. But what we can do is we can run GTA 5 and see how much frequency or clock speed we can sustain with the stock no VRM mod and see how hot it is while we're playing that. Let's go ahead and play GTA 5 on this computer. I feel like that's probably the most uh, common video game I have here that everybody practically still plays. GTA 5 is a very old game now, but it should still be pretty good. Now I do have an update here, so I'm just gonna wait for that. GTA 5 has a benchmark mode, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Here are the settings for the graphics on GTA 5. As you can see, we're barely using our video memory right here. And that is again because this does thermal throttle. So although it can supposedly run way better when it comes to the settings quality, uh, it cannot because after a couple of minutes, the frame rate goes down because the computer is running too hot. So as you can see, we are running around 100 frames per second, which is pretty good. That is definitely more than enough. But if we go ahead and take a look at our CPU temps right here, we are already hitting 100 degrees, 105 degrees on our GPU. That is absolutely ridiculous. And it is definitely on the warmer side of things now on this computer. CPU isn't too hot, but it is equally as hot. It's around 90 degrees, 95 degrees. Totally unacceptable. 102 degrees. Yeah, really, 
really crazy right here. We are basically bottlenecking because of our thermal capacity on this computer. Now again, this computer is very thin, so that is to be expected. And you can see the frame rate is indeed dipping down. It was around 190 frames per second, now we're around 60 to 70 frames per second on a good day. So there is definitely some thermal capacity limitations on this computer. We cannot avoid the fact that this is a very thin designed uh, computer which is unfortunate, but that is also one of the reasons why I love this computer because of its design. So there must be some sort of drawbacks, of course. But again, look at those temps. Totally insane for the fact that this is what? Crazy. 70, 78 degrees, 80 degrees on the CPU. And the GPU now has hovered around 90 degrees, 92, 93, which isn't too bad wait no i shouldn't be saying it's not too bad it is absolutely terrible that is gonna melt the dang computer itself now i don't have any sort of fan curves that is messing around with this computer everything is completely stock uh, i just have boot camp drivers as usual high settings now we're hovering around 50 60 frames per second uh, on the city area right here I forgot to mention that my studio right now is around 75 degrees so it is on the warmer side of things i just like it that way when i open that door the whole freaking room is going to turn into 60 degrees i closed it due to the fact that i am right beside the ac unit and so it gets pretty loud but we're going to go ahead and move this to my table right here now if you guys are wondering what type of screw this is this is a P5 on the iFixit kit. Bear in mind, there are a couple of tabs that you need to pry out, basically. So you just run it around with this flat spatula of a tool, and you should be able to release this. And you just have to be very careful because there are a couple of cables right here. So now that is out, you just have to pull this there you go you pull it up and pull it back open this thing and see what we got so i flipped the computer a little bit better right here uh, when it comes to the view we're supposed to put thermal pads around this area right here right here and we're going to make sure we avoid the heat sink and i believe there's also a couple of vrms right here that we need to put thermal pads on i'm going to go ahead and watch or look at a guide so that way we won't mess up this thing here is the diagram for this whole shenanigans right here and there's another one i guess if you look at this closely right here this is definitely a better diagram right here we're gonna go ahead and follow this all right we're gonna go ahead and try to cut this thing out what was this Not my proudest work. As you can see, it is a bit on the messy side of things. That's probably because this thermal pad has been sitting for quite some time. And you can see there's a couple of, uh, they just break a little bit. So I think uh, they just need a little bit of a heat. Hopefully that solves that. I still have a good amount left. So I'm gonna keep this here just in case this actually does not work and I have to redo this or whatever, whatnot. I did this part right here, which are mostly where the VRMs are located as well as this part. Now, I saw a Reddit post regarding putting thermal pads on these as well. Not sure which they belong to, but why not, right? The back is going to be incredibly hot. So uh, I did lose a screw. I didn't that. So unfortunately, let me just put this on. I'm going to be careful. I'm going to flatten this thing. Well, it's time to see how much better this is. Now that we have installed the thermal pads, let's go ahead and check out 
the performance so far. So if you guys remember before, it was hovering around 54, 55, 56 degrees, somewhere around that for the Radeon 5600M. Now we're hovering around 50 degrees. And look at that earlier, it was at 49. Look, 49 degrees earlier. That is, that's the first time I've ever seen that GPU hit 49 degrees ever. That is surprising. And look at this. Take a look at that CPU right there. We are hitting 48, 46 degrees idle. That is significantly better because I, if I do recall, we are hovering, we were hovering around 50 to 56 degrees Celsius, or I guess around 52, 56, somewhere around there. I could be wrong, but I've never seen the CPU drop down to 47 degrees Celsius or even 45 right now while idling. And so it is definitely an improvement as you guys see right there, which is a welcome change. And we're already hitting around 7.6, 7.8 watts of power. Supposedly the Turbo Boost should work properly now with this VRM. Oh, I definitely feel some warmth on this aspect of the computer itself. I'm gonna go ahead and see if the bottom is actually really that warm. So let's go ahead and it's, it's definitely noticeable on the areas where I put the thermal pads on. But luckily, I have a fan on the bottom of this computer. And so in a way, it is the bottom plate is essentially a heat sink, right? Am I, am I wrong? Am I right? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open Google Chrome right here like before. And as you can see, it still hits 70 degrees, but we have a much better clock speed when it comes to that which is really, really surprising. I am generally surprised. And actually it feels way faster opening that up. That could be a placebo effect. <laughs> Same settings and everything. We're gonna go ahead and go to graphics, I believe, and press tab. I'm seeing that this is already spiking up to 100 degrees, but it is very rare now. If you guys remember, there was like three different cores that was running 100 degrees. You could see now Although we are still running at an incredibly hot 90 degrees, well, look at that, 100 degrees on core five, it is sustaining much better than ever before. And you could see the Radeon 5600M right there, although it is still thermal throttling, as you can see right there, it is significantly cooler than ever before. So once this thing calms down to a bit, 92 degrees, while that is indeed a good improvement right there, Look at those frame rates. It's definitely way better. And um, although there are a couple of times where it dips down to 50s, again, that's most likely because of thermal throttling. That will be because of the fan curves. Definitely a bigger improvement than ever before. I mean, take a look at this. Now we're hovering around 70, 80 degrees before it was like 50, 60 degrees. So in a way, although this isn't like a night and day difference when it comes to temps, it is significantly better. If you guys remember, we were hovering around 99, 98 degrees Celsius. Now we're hovering around 96. And I think the biggest difference for this scenario is definitely the CPU temps. As you can see, we're only hovering around 70 degrees now, which is really way, 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 way better than what it was before. And look at this. We're getting 100 frames per second now, sustainably, or more often than ever before. 80, 90, 100, that is, that is a significant difference. I'd say probably 20%, 30%. Uh, you could really get the most out of your computer because of this VRM mod. We were hovering around 60 frames per second in this scenario, but look at that. Now we're hovering around 80 frames per second, 90 frames per second. Wow, that is an average of 10 frames per second difference right there. That is, that is impressive. That is generally impressive. This is gonna be one of the last videos for this 2019 MacBook. I'm sure you guys are completely tired of this thing already. Yeah, yeah, I know. M chips are way better. The M1 Pro Max MacBook Pro is way better. I got it, I get it. <laughs> this is a six year old machine we're talking about. But you know what, for funsies, I am glad I got this MacBook because I got to make a lot more videos than I expected with this computer. I mean, this is content right here, guys. And if I get an M chip MacBook, it's already so fast, there's no need to make videos about it. <laughs> That's what this channel is all about. It's about giving old MacBooks a second chance of life or old computers in general a second chance of life. Although a lot of the videos I have right now so far are with MacBooks, I still believe that these Intel machines still have a 
very good chance at surviving the next couple of years when it comes to using it as a daily. Again, they're not the fastest thing in the world, but they're also are not slow. It's just the fact that the M chips have just a surprisingly big amount of uh, leap performance wise compared to these Intel machines right here, as we know. But again, that doesn't mean that this thing is left for stranded. That doesn't mean that you can't use this as a, I mean, after all, you can still watch movies. You can still use this as an office device. You can still use this to print things. You can still use this as social media things. Edit some basic videos, although I still edit 4K on this and it surprisingly works well. So, you know, people have different preferences. People love the news and greatest and things. And I absolutely adore that. I am not complaining about that, but this is again, another video at giving these MacBooks a second chance at life. Anyway, peace out.